Hello everyone, today we will be going over Geometry Chapter 1, Section 4 of the Big Ideas Math Common Core High School textbook. So our topic for today is perimeter and area in the coordinate plane and our essential question is how can you find the perimeter and area of a polygon in a coordinate plane? So let's first look at some core concepts. We first have polygon, and in simple terms, a polygon is basically a closed plane figure formed by three or more sides. Each side has to intersect at two sides. Therefore, a polygon would need at least three vertices. And whenever you're naming a polygon, we need to list the vertices in a consecutive order. So for example, this polygon that they have listed here, um, you can name this polygon A, B, C, D, E, polygon E, A, B, C, D, polygon D, C, B, A, E, and so forth. So just make sure that you use all four letters or all however many letters that they give you on the polygon and in a consecutive order. So now on this table to the right, we can see that there's number of sides and type of polygon. So the number of sides often correlate to what the polygon's name is. So whenever we have three sides, the polygon is named triangle, four sides is quadrilateral, five sides is pentagon, and so on. And then we go look at the bottom here and we see n is n-agon. So n basically represents the number of sides. So for example, if we have a polygon with 104 sides, it would be a 104 gon, which means that a polygon that has 104 sides. Moving on to some vocabulary, we have convex polygon and concave polygon. So basically, the difference between these two is that whenever we ex try looking at whether it's a concave or convex polygon, we're basically going to extend the sides as lines. So in this case, we will extend all four sides as lines, and if the lines come into the interior of the polygon that makes it a concave polygon however it if it always stays outside and never interest or comes into the interior it will be a convex polygon so in this case in a concave polygon we can see that this line goes through the interior which makes it a concave polygon so next we have the distance formula which is used when finding perimeter and area in a coordinate plane so it is d equals square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared and it's best to just memorize this equation because it will be put into use in our future problems. So some reminders from algebra, we just have the perimeter and area of a triangle, square, and rectangle. So now on to some exercises. We will classify each polygon by the number of sides and then tell whether it is convex or concave. So looking at this figure right here, we can count one, two, three, four sides. And by remembering the diagram in this previous example right here, four sides would be a quadrilateral. So if it's a convex or concave, we remember to use lines, extend the lines from the sides. So let's just do that now for both of them. So looking here, we can see that the line intersects with the interior, which makes it concave. Now moving on to B, we can count one, two, three, four, five, six sides, which makes it a hexagon. In addition, we can see that when we extend the lines from the sides, we can see that they never intersect from the interior, which makes it a concave polygon. An additional way to remember concave and convex is that in a concave, the root word cave, you go inside of a cave just like the lines go inside the interior of a polygon. So let's move on to some more exercises. So this one is find the perimeter of triangle ABC with the vertices A is negative 2 comma 3, B is 3 comma negative 3, and C is negative 2 comma negative 3. So what we want to do first is to draw a triangle in the coordinate plane and then find the lengths of each side using the distance formula. So let's plot it on a plane. And so now we have a visual representation which makes it much easier for us to find use the distance formula. So let's first start off with finding the length of side AB with the distance formula. So once we do that, we just plug in the coordinates and in the end we get around 7.81. Next, when we find side B, 
side B is much easier to find because we can just count the units. So one, two, three, four, five. So that's the length of the side. And for side C, A, it is also easy. We can just count one, two, three, four, five, six. So it is so much easier that this is a right triangle because we have one horizontal and one vertical line, making it much easier to count these two lines. After we have figured out all the lengths of the three sides, we can add them up to get 18.81 units. Moving on to another exercise, find the area of triangle DEF with vertices D is 1 comma 3, E is 4 comma negative 3, and F is negative 4 comma negative 3. So again, let's just start off by plotting it on a coordinate plane. And remember that this problem is finding the area, whereas the last problem was finding the perimeter. So we're going to still need to use the distance formula not to find the three side lengths, but rather to find the lengths of the base and height so we can multiply them and then divide them by two. So let's first start off with finding our base of FE. We can just count the units. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we get eight is the base. And then let's try finding the height. We can also count this. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is six. So now we just multiply these two. Six times eight is 48, and we just divide it by two, which totals to 24 square units. So the area is 24 square units. Finally, let's try one more problem together, and this one is a real life scenario. So you are building a shed in your backyard. The diagram shows the four vertices of the shed. Each unit in the coordinate plane represents one foot. Find the area of the floor of the shed. So first, what we're going to want to do is find the length and width. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have a length of six feet and a width of one, two, three, four, five. So once we multiply six and five, we get a total of 30. So the area of the floor of the shed is 30 square feet. When finding the perimeter, we can just use six plus five plus six plus five, which totals to 24 feet. So now try these exercises on your own and pause before I show the answers to see how you did and make sure you remember the distance formula for a lot of these problems. Okay, now we'll move on to showing you guys the answers. So for seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11, we have 22 units, 16 units, around 22.43 units, around 14.47 units, and around 16.93 units. For 13 through 16, we have 7.5 square units, 24.5 square units, nine square units, and 10 square units. So finally, for our last set of problems, 17 through 24, we have 9.66 units, 16.1 units, 12.17 units, 27.48 units, and then that is all for the perimeter. Now for the area, we have 4 square units, 16 square units, 6 square units, and 26 square units. And just so you know, most of these are rounded numbers. Please like and subscribe if this video was helpful and you want more content on the following geometry chapters. Thank you!